Hey guys, how you doing? Sorry we're a little late. Just waiting on some technical difficulties. And then uh, give everybody a second to join. And uh, today we're joined by uh, Jim uh, from Team Rogue Patriots. Oops. Team <laughs> he said don't say team, just say scenario Team Rogue Patriots Rogue or some Patriots. Or Rogue Patriots. But yeah. So joined by Jim today. He's also known as Avalanche on the field. Uh, a lot of you guys already know him from generally at the big games and stuff. So um, he's come to join us today. That's why we're doing this special episode. Um, they actually have some events coming up soon, too. Um, Avalanche is going to be the general, I believe, in the game you got coming up, right? Which one? Uh, the Black Dawn. Black Dawn, yeah. I'm the cartel leader at uh, Black Dawn at SMP okay. next month. Um, not next month. It's not March yet. It's in, in April. 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 Early April. Though. <clears throat> yeah, first like, weekend in April. Yeah, April. April. Um, Round April. <clears throat> we have cookies. Awesome. We're going to have cookies, so Cartel is going to win because we're going to have cookies. I'm literally baking cookies. or Just like making... Sam vs. Grinch, you brought cookies. Yeah, yeah I brought the, I brought the, the green cookies. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a joke that just went too far, and now I have to make cookies. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, um, actually, and I mean, they're going to win anyway because you're leading them, so that'll be good. I think it's more about my guys than it is me. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll help. Um, so yeah, that's going to be, that's like one of the early weekends in April, not at our field, but, uh, still Rogue Patriots me doing that. So make sure you guys support them, show up, help them win. Play cartel. Play cartel. Yeah. Don't play the other team or it's not worth playing. Yeah. No, DEA is going to, they, they kick puppies. Yeah. Over cliffs. Um, so, <laughs> and then we have our next big game is going to be Black Hawk Down, which is April 15th. That I'm looking forward to. Which we'll be giving away a ticket and a t-shirt today to one of the viewers, um, I will we'll pick one at random, or I'll let you pick one at the end. Something However like you want to do it. We'll figure I mean, it I'm, out I'm as we go. Whatever. Yeah. So we got a ticket and a t-shirt to give away for that. So make sure while you're checking in to uh, comment, like, share, and that way it'll give you a chance to win the ticket. So comment, like, and share. A chance to win a ticket and a t-shirt, and that'll work. I'll have them put that in the comments to do that too. Um, we have uh, Ben and Seth running comments today, so... If one of them could type that in there, the you know comment, like and share for a big game ticket, and by the end of this, we will pick a winner. Um, oh shit! Next will be um, oh there you go, drop that <laughs> right on Facebook Live. No, yeah, I'm not uh, that's okay. Um, we'll bleep that out. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you, Seth. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, but then so we got that big game coming up April fifteenth, and we got some big uh, big stuff coming out too for Hogback that uh, I don't think we want to release it yet, but we'll slowly release details about some field stuff we're doing too. Oh yeah, the field stuff's exciting. Yeah, um, we got some big stuff coming there. So I would just watch our Facebook and Instagram feed. We'll be posting up some random pictures and some hints, and you guys can kind of guess what's going on there. And if you come out the Hogback, you'll see the work in progress. So join us every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, you'll be able to see what's going on there. Now, since you play Scenario Paintball, a lot of Scenario people now finally tuning in. Mm -hmm. um, and some people who maybe want to get into Scenario Paintball. I know like a couple of my questions I had for you were like, how did you get into Scenario Paintball? Because I think originally you played Speedball. Yeah, I played Speedball before, years, years ago. Years ago. That was a long but time ago. how did you get into the Scenario aspect of it? <sighs> I got yeah, bombarded with these questions too. I got, you didn't even know them. Yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Like we talked about this, but you didn't. I didn't tell, bring that you, up. You didn't no. warn me for that one. No, no. Um, actually, I, I like the. It, it was when I got out of the army. I I started playing again, mm -hmm. and I, I found objectives to be more interesting than a little field with you know. I yeah. mean, back when I played speedball, it was you know. Hyper pipe and, and whatnot. We didn't have blow up bunkers, um, but I, I just didn't have fun playing speedball anymore. Mm -hmm. And Seth Target from the yeah, yeah, yeah. Patriots, he he and I, um, we we actually met playing music together. But no. we decided to go out and start playing, and then just went from there. Yeah, actually, the first time he and I played together was at your field, like five years ago, maybe even longer. Actually, actually, it probably yeah. was at this point. Yeah. Um, and then we, we played with another team for, for a few years on the scenario side. Yeah. Um, and decided to go break off and do our own thing. And it's just blown up from there. But the, the scenario game is, 
it's more of a thinking man's game. Yeah. And you still have to go out and run and maneuver. Oh, yeah. It's and demanding. It, it really is. It's much more demanding to, especially at Hogback with yeah, the terrain. terrain or yeah. Even some of the other fields, like we play at Command Decision several times yeah. every year down in North Carolina. Yeah. And the field itself is much larger, but the terrain is, it's it's challenging and it's and it undulates, mm-hmm. but it's not as bad or drastic yeah. as it is at Hogback. Hogback's uphill both um, ways, yeah. Yeah, like there's <laughs> there's no downhill at Hogback. Sometimes, yeah. You know? I mean, there um, are its fields that are flat, but yeah, for scenarios, definitely a lot of hard terrain, which kind of makes it nice because a lot of places to hide, a lot yeah. of different maneuvering and stuff that you can do that you can't do on other fields. That's why a lot of people like it. Um, but um, I guess that explains how you got into scenario paintball. Um, another question I actually got today on the phone was somebody was asking me about like different um, like scenarios. They're like, so what are the positions and scenarios and roles and all that? Like, um, and I kind of know the answer to that, but I figured it'd be good for you to explain it, having done scenario paintball for so long. Well, I mean, is it so? If you're looking like on a team, it really is dictated by the team. Yeah. So, like for us, we're we're pretty structured. Um, mm-hmm. We have command structure we have different players who play different roles yeah we've got guys assigned to reconnaissance and scouting we've got you know we've got a sniper team they're both running bolt actions and yeah. are shooting nothing but first strikes we've got our command staff we've got our assault guys then we got our support guys that are running you know if we're playing a mag fed game then they're typically running a dam with a box mag so mm-hmm. that they can really lay down the suppressive fire but then the assault guys would be running you know, a T-15 or something yeah. like that. That's something light push fast. forward, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, for us, like, uh, Spencer Weck, Wicky, he's, mm-hmm. our, he's our team sniper. Yeah. And with his SSR, he'll pop you at 100 yards. Oh, yeah, with, he's with good. With the first yeah, strike. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then Marco, who won the... Marco won the contest. Marco won the sniper contest yeah. at Prometheus last year, and yeah. he's the other guy on our sniper team. Yeah, yeah, so, that makes and sense. And he runs a SAR-12, so you got yeah. two guys with very good bolt action. Yeah, Marco's real good with that, Yeah, you know, Marco's. Um... <laughs> But then you've got, like, Reggie, Viper, Reggie Burgess, if he's watching. He always is. Of course Reggie he is. loves us. Yes. Um, he's, <laughs> you know, he's he's a good cross between command staff and and support. You know, I mean, he's able yeah. to, he'll, he'll break his dam out and lay waste yeah. with, with the box mag. And you just can't get close to the guy. But then he can also set it down and, you know, is really he, take command as needed he's a flexible player he can he can yeah. kind of fill whatever role needs to be filled if yeah. he has to from what i've seen i've seen him i've seen him do i've seen him assault i've seen him run around the die dam i've seen him run around the sniper rifle yes yeah, you know <laughs> I, I love that i've gun. seen him do all three so yeah I, I think he's a he's a very versatile player but, he is so basically it's kind of broken down into almost like for those of you who play a lot of video games like me uh, Battlefield two positions almost. You have your recon, you have your assault, your support. Yeah. Um, and you, you know that's recon being sniper. Um, you know, it's just like that's it. Pretty yeah, much, right? I mean, pretty much. So like we've got we've got our command staff, and typically unless we're commanding, commanding. Yeah. You know, um, and even then, a lot of times, like I, I command a lot of games every year, mm-hmm. and if I can, if if the you know the missions specifications allow it mm-hmm. i go out and I, I go out and command in the field with the guys yeah um in, in which case i usually play more of an assault role because yeah. that's what i'm good at um <clears throat> but you know we, we've got the one or two guys sometimes more depending on the size of the game who are assigned to command and make sure that everything goes the way it's supposed to and, and coordinate movements and you know yeah Maneuver QRF, quick reaction force is needed. You will send Wiki and, and Troll Slayer out to do uh, to re- reconnaissance or mm-hmm. after HVTs. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times we'll maneuver our, uh, our support elements in to, you know, suppress or distract a yeah. target. Yeah. While, you know, a lot of times Seth, target, he'll take an, an assault team and, and show up out of nowhere while everybody's yeah. distracted shooting it, you know. And you, guys, or whoever and you guys have some guys who like specialize in smoke grenades and paint grenades and stuff. Yeah, Resty um, and and Tony, uh, and they they specialize in smoke grenades. Oh, okay. Target, however, specializes in doing bad things with smoke grenades accidentally and burning his hands. 
Nah, I think he did pretty yeah. good though. But yeah, yeah, he did a really good job of burning his hands. Yeah, <laughs> he did, yeah. but he is making sure no one else did. So yeah. anyway, um, that covers the positions. Um, if you guys are wondering about the difference between uh, mag fed and um, non mag fed. We actually have an old episode where we uh, talked with Calista and the Reaper, and we went over that. Um, yeah. But if you want to touch on that real quick, that's cool. We'll just go over it real fast. What's like, that, MagFed? The difference between a scenario team and a MagFed <clears throat> team, and like how you guys cover both roles. Like you guys do both. Yeah. But well, like just real quick, like um, you know, a scenario team and MagFed. I already know the difference, but I'll let you explain it real I'm, quick. I mean, most MagFed teams are scenario teams. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there, there's really no place in in conventional speedball or but what i'm talking about is their teams are specifically mag fed right and they don't do regular there there are there are a lot of teams that are mag fed only mm -hmm. um you know meaning that the the marker they're using excuse me is fed by a magazine like a conventional yeah firearms. and they won't use um, hoppers they won't use hoppers um we actually got made fun of in you know like a friendly way when we were up at uh OTP for Living mm -hmm. Dead up in New Jersey. Yeah. Um, and they kept calling us hopper sticks because we were all running mags. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> MagFed but you, is but a you whole... guys do both, though. We do. We're, we're an yeah. open class team. Um, yeah. But we run what suits that scenario. The, the scenario. Yeah. If it's Prometheus, run a mags. If it's. Well, Prome yeah, Prometheus it, it, it is, is mag fed only. only Zoom Leader is mag fed only. Yeah. You know? and, and really, if it. I would like personally. I would like to run more mag fed games. Yeah. But there's so many really good open class games like yeah. Folda or Black Hawk Down yeah. or you know I mean there, Ion. There's so many really good open class games mm -hmm. where if you go out running mag fed, you're really really out. You're at a huge disadvantage. I and agree. even even shooting first strikes, if you got 20 guys running hoppers shooting at you, first they have strikes a thousand are, rounds yeah. to your one. Yeah. 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 Good it, luck. It just, you know, so you have to kind of balance it, yeah. and you balance it by for sure. You know, yeah. having the guy shooting. 20, yeah. 20 balls a second, yeah. supporting the guy with the SAR-12 who can hit you from 100 yards. Yeah, exactly. So that makes sense. Um, so that's that's that. And then um, also, like, for communication, for a lot of scenario teams use radios and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you want to go into that? Like, how that works? Like, I think each team has their own comms and, like, yeah. radios. And you could start out, like, I'll just start here for beginners. You guys can start with, like, if you guys want to radio communication with your team, first of all, go to your field, talk to them, make sure you're not going to be interrupting their radio stuff because that's really annoying. Um, two would be you can just start as easily as going to like online Amazon and just buying cheap radios. I see the work. Motorola walkabouts a lot. Exactly. They don't work the best, but if you're just getting into it, that's like 60 bucks for two and you're good. You yeah. know, It'll work. It's not going to be ideal, but it'll work. Um, now, for you guys, you guys have some pretty sophisticated we radios. We have some pretty high-end radios. Yeah. Um, we uh, Typically, within the team, we have some Motorola radios. I don't know the model number. Um, yeah, but they're okay. digital channel hopping, encrypted. Yeah, people can't get on yeah, your line I mean, and everything. You, and If it's not programmed with the rest of our radios, you, you can't, can't get, get in. into it. Yeah. And we've got it set up to where, you know, there's, like on my radio, I've got access to every channel mm -hmm. within the team. Uh, and most of our command staff has the same, mm -hmm. but we've got a channel for command only. We've got a channel that's the whole team. We've got a channel yeah. that's, you know, if we, depending on the game, sometimes we'll break into separate fire teams and whatnot. And you can, we've got ours set up to where you can scroll through yeah. different channels yeah, to I've reach different it. people as needed. It's pretty cool. Um, we also use the Bay of Fangs on occasion. Um, those typically we use because a lot of players in the scenario world to use them because mm -hmm. you can set privacy codes they're not as secure as the ones that we use mm -hmm. but they're if you set privacy codes unless you got somebody who's really good yeah then they can't get hacked and that's that's actually like a legit thing in scenario games yeah i've i've been sitting in, in a tactical operations center at a game mm -hmm. with somebody running equipment hacking my opponent's radio transmission oh, so that i can figure out what they're doing and it really works and it yeah. really makes a big difference yeah if you know what your enemy is going to do yeah um so and that's why we use the radios we use is yeah and now patriots just... win super bowls too yeah <laughs> you, get, you, yeah. Get, you get some tom brady yeah. out there you know helping you guys um, and stuff but we we have a few handful of bay of fangs as well so that you know a, a lot of games we've made alliances with other teams or other players mm -hmm. and that way we can have comms with them as well and yeah. still have it on a 
on a secure level. Yeah, you I know? got you. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty neat. I think for you guys, a lot of times I see you guys when you get there in the morning, you guys are setting up your radios and like um, usually Seth is like setting them up, making sure everybody's mm -hmm. dialed in and it all works, which is really cool. Yep. Set them up, check them out, radio yeah. check. Run a little radio sure check before the game, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, we just got new radios for Hogback like last year and they've been working out great too. They're encrypted mm -hmm. and stuff and... We haven't had any issues. Well, we just went on Amazon, got ours. They're pretty cheap because they're big. Like they're not good for paintball playing because they're huge, but mm -hmm. like for breathing and stuff, it's great. Yeah, you get the yeah. job done. Exactly. You're not, you're not running durable. your typical FRS. So like yeah, they're you rugged. know the yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'm not even gonna give those radios a plug because they're encrypted. But if someone else bought the same ones, they'd be encrypted on the same thing, and it would mess up our stuff. So uh, yeah, yeah. Go on Amazon, find very expensive radios or cheap ones, but don't find anything that's too in the middle because that's probably what we got. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> so I guess like the other part that I had um, for scenario things is like you guys when like what would be your like um, scenario game that you've played that you're like basically like what would be your the scenario you're looking forward to the most this year puts in later without really? a shadow of a doubt yeah puts in later and then prometheus those are those are I was say, ask me the same question yeah. prometheus <laughs> well you haven't been to platoon later no i haven't platoon but, later you know. platoon later so prometheus when we when we started designing prometheus mm -hmm. i i may everything that I threw at you was like soft core platoon leader. Yeah, yeah, platoon yeah. leader is not for the faint of heart. It's a very, very challenging, very involved game. game yeah. And a lot of players won't go to it because it's so intense. Yeah. Um, but that's what we love about it. Like yeah, it's yeah. nonstop. It's 20 hours straight on the field. You're playing in the night. Um, you know, two years ago, we, yeah, two years ago, we played absolute monsoon mm -hmm. game. That game didn't stop. Yeah. We were so wet. Seth was, it was like one o'clock in the morning. We're so drenched wet that mm -hmm. Seth was walking through the creek, like almost up to his weight, waist in the creek, mm -hmm. and didn't realize he was in the creek because we were so drenched from the rain. Yeah, it was it was awful and awesome at the same time. And then you know they've, they've got multiple role players out on out on the field and everything. Yeah. Um, you know we we took a, a nun captive and a doctor captive and, yeah. and everything, and it, it's it's a very well thought out game and it's very intense game. Um, and what time I, of year is that game? It's uh, it's in May every year. May, okay. Um, and that is that is for if you really if you really like to push yourself, which most of us do. Obviously, we, we really like the the challenges. Um, so your recommendation: be good platoon leader, warm up for Prometheus, and then come out to Prometheus. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, because platoon leader is is a very difficult game, and it's yeah. a lot of fun. And if you can make it through Platoon Leader, yeah. uh, a lot of players don't even make it through the whole game. Yeah. If you can make it through Platoon Leader, you will love Prometheus because Prometheus is is a lot like it mm -hmm. in the mind game way. Yeah. Like it really makes you think, yeah. but it it just doesn't beat you into the ground like Platoon Leader does. Yeah. You leave Platoon Leader and you're exhausted for three weeks. I actually remember after yeah. you guys played, from, uh, sorry, I almost said Prometheus, but platoon leader last year um i remember reggie came back and i just heard stories for like every time he came out i just heard stories about you know this yeah. and that from it and i was like okay man it's cool it's <laughs> coming man it'll be yeah. okay you'll get your fix no you know? and, that, and that's it is like there's so few games that yeah. really push you like that and, and prometheus is is there it's a little friendlier on the body except for the terrain the terrain i was gonna say difficult. i feel like i think prometheus is pretty rough um, terrain and it's, stuff it's too, very but rough terrain but at least you get summer. a couple breaks you do we do have breaks you know? and stuff and um, that leads me into like the paintball community i feel like a big reason why um so like i saw the command bros going this morning like they're talking about like you know when you go out to play paintball it's not just about paintball it's about the people you meet oh paintball. absolutely and half of the fun is going and camping at the field. When yeah, you know, hanging out with your friends and the people you meet. Like half the people I've met through paintball, I wouldn't have met if it wasn't. You yeah. know, like half the people I've met that are like cool people, hang out on a regular basis. I, more than half, I'd say. I've pretty much been all, all right. So ninety nine percent of people. Yeah. Okay. So Sorry, anyway, all my friends are paintball. Players, yeah, all too. my friends are paintball players. The so, ones that weren't paintball players, I've made paintball. They've been, players. Yeah, or at least they played. Yeah. Like I have friends who aren't paintball players, but they've at least played paintball. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so I, I think that's another thing people don't realize. Like it build paintball is definitely a um, it's a social thing, you know. It really is. Well, like Prometheus, you've met like Jess, my fiance. Yeah, she doesn't play, 
but yeah. she comes when she can. She'll come and she'll camp and yeah. hang out, you know, and and she has a lot of fun. She's come to Folda with us two years in a row. Yeah. And she comes and she camps and she complains about it being cold, so I buy her a, a heater for the tent. Yeah, here's the heater. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, be quiet. You know, but Make no, me I mean, snuff. but she doesn't even play and she <laughs> and she loves coming out. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, because to her, it's it's you know, it's it's a social it's event. It's camping to her, you know. Yeah, I mean, Joy used to come out to paintball field and help us all the time, and mm-hmm. she, she I've seen her there a handful of times. Yeah, yeah. You know? Even even recently. Yeah, and like she said, she wanted a new purse for her birthday one year, so I got her paintball gun. I got her pink mini. <laughs> she sold it and bought a purse, but I, you know, I'm sure she did. She at least played with it twice. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it definitely it's about the people you meet and stuff, and I think that's really cool. And the scenario games, I feel like, is a really good atmosphere for that. Versus like speedball tournament, yeah, you meet people, but it's like, I don't know. When I play spe- speedball, it was a little bit more. You're friendly to everybody, but you really want to shoot them really bad, yeah. you know. And it's like, I love how scenario paintball. Like, if people have um, issues, like with if your gun doesn't work, if that doesn't work, people are like, oh man, I'll help you out. Like, even if it's on the other team, mm-hmm. like you'd still let them use an extra gun if you had one. You wouldn't be like, oh, sucks to be you. My yeah. team has a better chance of winning now. Well, you know? Yeah, I mean, we were loaning equipment to uh, the guys from SAS Mid-Atlantic at Folda last year. We yeah. were playing NATO, they were playing Warsaw. Exactly. You know? And I mean, not to say it doesn't happen in speedball. I mean, it definitely happens in speedball. I remember um, when I was a kid playing speedball tournament, Stephen Bright, who still plays tournament paintball, his dad, we went to like a mechanical um, only tournament in this indoor place, and his dad let our whole team. He used to run one of the Peeves stores. He let us all use like auto cockers. Nice, because none of us had. I miss my. Own none of us had that kind of gun. So, and they all shot great. So I mean that that does exist in all walks of paintball, but I feel like more so in scenario paintball. Yeah, well, a lot of one. You know, you really look at it. Scenario players, for the most part, do it for fun. Exactly, because there's no official professional league you know we don't have you know well what do you get for we winning? have the different yeah i mean you know bragging rights and maybe like some patches or something like that yeah but you're not winning a thousand dollars you win you get some plaques and some microfibers and stuff like that but it's not like you know playing d3 or d4 yeah. or d2 or d you know play yeah. pro or whatever not trying to make like a like a living off of it eventually mm. or something like that Although that would be pretty sweet. It would be awesome. It would be you know? sweet, yeah. You just want to get to the level in scenario. You just want to get to the level where it doesn't cost you to play. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, our next big things we got going on are Blackhawk Down, um, April 15th. That's going to be fun. And then we have our Hogback B Survival Games, kind of modeled after PUBG. Uh, yeah, you know, I got friends from West Virginia and Connecticut that want to come down for that. Yeah, just make sure they know it's like they should play walk-ons that day because only one game after walk-ons, yeah. and then we're gonna keep doing it after walk-ons. Like following that, we'll do we'll do um, doubles, we'll do squads, like a four because you have four-man squads just like in the game. Just, but I've the never first one's the gonna be solos only. But it looks, it, yeah. it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. It is gonna be wild. It's gonna be off the hook. Like people who play the game will be super into it. People who don't play a game will still like it, but I think at first it'll be confusing to them. Because they're going to be like, what? My field is closing? I have to go into this zone? What are you talking about? You know, because in the game, the playing area kind of closes up. So we're going to be closing the playing area. And I think that people who don't play the game, if they don't listen listen carefully or watch the Facebook Live videos to understand it, they're going to be like, they're going to, they're going to end up getting called out because they're going to be out of the playing areas. Ah, okay. You know, and that's the biggest thing. But I think it's gonna be wild. Like I think the solos will be good for people to get a hold of it. And then we'll do the doubles, and we'll do this. We'll do um, squads, and we'll also do more solos and stuff. And we're gonna get each person who does it. Like I'm gonna make up the cards, like a little player card. Okay. So you're gonna have like you'll be player number one. I'd be player number two. Ben would be three. Seth would be four. We'd all have our own numbers. And then when you get out, we'll keep track of when people get out and try to keep an order as best we can. To win yeah, I saw you out. guys talking about it. So we'll try to do like a little bit of ranking. So maybe at the end of the summer, when we stop doing them, we can have like some kind of grand prize for like whoever did the best overall or something. That's like pretty that, cool. Which I think I think it's a, lot a good of fun. idea. Yeah, it'll be pretty cool. Yeah, but um, so yeah, I mean that that's our other thing that starts in March, uh, March thirty first, and then we're gonna keep doing them after that. I'll put together a schedule for that. And then also, I think I told you this year, we're going to be doing a lot of food truck stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Our first weekend of food trucks is March 10th and 11th. Just let me know when Flavor is going to be back. They were awesome. Yeah. Rita was really good, too. We're going to try to get that on our website, a schedule, because I already have the schedule, but they all have different days, because I want to keep it new and fresh every day, so we have different yeah. food trucks coming in. Um, the other thing would be, we're going to have on March, um, March 11th, 
which is Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, mm. we're going to have the um, kind of like re-grand opening of Dark Force and Dark Force <laughs> Dead Zone. So you guys helped us put together Dark mm -hmm. Forest, and that field's pretty sweet now. Super Woods Ball Field, all in the woods. We played Dark Forest at Magfed yeah. Meetup yesterday, or yesterday, Sunday. In the mud. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was like pouring rain. <laughs> Target, Seth and I went went running across the field, and I had a patch of mud and slid like 30 feet down yeah, the hill. Yeah, I would not be <laughs> running in that on the rain, yeah. But uh, that, that field plays very well. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. I had a lot of fun on that field. Yeah, um, that field looks awesome. And I love the way we set it up now, so it's like, well, you guys set it up. So it actually plays from fort to castle, like that side to side, because mm -hmm. I think for big games, that's going to play amazing. It'll, it'll play really well, especially for like the uh, the zombie run. I mean, even just, zombie invasion, that'll just be a Black good... Hawk Down. Like, yeah. that area is huge. Like, that area, they play that a lot. That's a huge firefight area in Black Hawk Down. So, like, people who played Black Hawk Down last year, this will be, like, a whole new experience. It's make a whole new field for them. Oh, absolutely. By the time they get to it. Yeah. So, that'll be um, that'll be uh, March 11th. And we're going to try to do some raffles that day. Like, prizes, raffles, everything through walk-ons. I'll probably be up there on the floor there running different scenarios. With, like, um, I'm going to um, this place called... Uh, Hope's Treasure. There's a plug for them. It's a consign. What do you call that? Like the thrift store. Mm -hmm. what do you consignment know? shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Store, something like that. yeah. Consignment or thrift shop. Uh, Hope's Treasures. I'm gonna go in there tomorrow. I'm gonna be getting some like you know. I try to pick up like briefcases, suit jackets, and stuff like that. And that helps us run like kind of cool scenario games. Yeah. Like good little props. props. Yeah. So that'll be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. So I'll be running a couple of those games this weekend. But that weekend I'm gonna hit it like. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I, I mean, all and we were just playing, you know, single hit elimination, and yeah. it was it was an absolute blast. Yeah, you know, in I, the I rain. Really had, like, I mean, it wasn't raining that hard in the woods. Know? I mean, it, but it was you know, it, the, it, the weather the wasn't areas. that bad. Sunday. It was. It got it got better. It got progressively um, better. It started off kind of rainy, but definitely, I think by about one o'clock, it pretty much cleared out. Yeah, well, and that's because I got there about eight. And yeah. I, the sun was starting to peek through the clouds uh, when I yeah. left, and I left around one. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. It was light rain. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it. the field played well. It's actually very well balanced, and I, I found that out. Like, when we were building it, we, we did walkthroughs and whatnot, but yeah. we never really got to, we, ne we never gave it a good test run. And that, yeah. that's kind of why I asked you if we could run it on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, I was like, sure, go for it. I mean, let's, it's let's ready, see if there's so any adjustments need yeah. to be made. Um, and we played, you know, we played four rounds, mm -hmm. and. We, yeah. You know, so I got to play from either side of the field twice, and it it, it didn't matter what side of the field you started on. If mm -hmm. you had, you know, if you had guys that were working well together, like any game, you yeah, know, any round, you were able to take the field. Yeah, and and it was it's a very well balanced field. I think it played really well. Um, and then we saw like that top side, the little rock area, yeah. Reggie Sniper Nest. Yeah, Reggie <laughs> Sniper Nest. I saw him walking that field. He's like, "Well, if I'm up here, I have a shot on this guy, this guy, this guy, and let me move this rock." But he just he just gives rock. it away because like we knew every time Reggie's gonna run up the tape the line and go time. right there. Yeah, and that's what we did. Is we just. He did, he never actually made it to where he wanted to go because we knew that's where Everybody's, he was going. So we just throw a few first strikes at him and yeah. call it a day. So if anybody's watching this, you're coming out to play Dark Forest and you see Reggie out there. Um, he's going to go to the sniper's nest. So just shoot him off the break every time. Like just burn that spot and you'll be good. Oh, even with first strikes, that's a long shot. Um, but you could scare him. And yeah, make throw, him, throw like three thousand rounds that way. Make him take cover. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to cover? I think we got I mean, it's it. It's your show. I, yeah, I'm, but I mean, I'm, it's your, you're the guest today. Prometheus. So. Well, Rondell, Prometheus. where the cookies are at. Oh, they're Black, ago, but they're oh, Black Dawn. That's where they Rondell, are. Rondell, I will have cookies um, for anyone who plays or supports the cartel, hint, hint, nod, nod, um, at Black Dawn. Uh, if requests are being taken, just uh, inbox me or email me. Samoas. Um, no, nah, man, they got to be like something I can make. Well, you know, the Girl Scouts, the Girl Scouts are out and harassing me outside of Walmart. So, oh my um, gosh, those cookies! That the other team won't have any. There players. Won't, I was gonna say there won't be any players on DEA. If I'll just, I'll just bring a trailer load. I, of I'd be like, all right, I'm wheeling out day. there. Where are those mid cookies? You know, <laughs> like I'm ready to fight. No, nah, it's, it's going to be a fun game. That that one. Where they lace those things of crack or something? They're yeah, so good. Something to make you addicted. That's but yeah, four dollars a box. I mean, if that's it. I'll pay it, you know. Yeah. Like that's that's a good deal for a whole box of cookies, probably like two thousand calories, whatever. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's worth it, definitely. 
So yeah, but um, if he's is that Rodell you said? Rondell. Rondell. Yeah, he's the chapter president of SAS Maryland. Cool. He's uh, him and Kenny Ricker are the ones running the Black Dawn game. Okay, SMP. okay, I know Kenny. All right, so um, yeah, what was we were going into? Well, like, I was going to say we should talk about Prometheus, we should. but but we should almost yeah like a whole. There's a lot of stuff that we can't really talk about about Prometheus. Yeah, you guys are trying to like um, keep it covered up, unveiled, you know, like a little bit. Well, I mean, just like last year, we plan on having all kinds of crazy surprises. Hey, this year is actually going to be a little, a little more of a mind game than last year was. Alan has already shown me um, drafts for the patch for Prometheus. Good, good. So he's working on that. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the final one's going to look like yet, but he showed me a couple drafts yeah. when he came out for the Magfed thing. Uh, so that was cool. Yeah, he sent me a few ideas, and I was just like, dude, it's, you know, that's your thing. Like, <laughs> He's good at it, yeah. You're, it's you're like, good at man, that. Good like, at that yeah. I'm good at the tactics thing. I'll take care of this side. You, yeah, yeah. you do the... the but I was excited. I saw yeah. the stuff. I was like, that's cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, what he's, what he's shown me so far looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we were just talking, uh, I was talking to Ben earlier today, and I was just telling him, like, anybody I see at the field now with, like, the Santa Versa Grinch patch, mm-hmm. I'm just like, that dude's a hardcore dude. Because he survived that game. Yeah. Because yeah. that game was... Literally, the, literally zero degrees when I got to the yeah, that Zero is, degrees. I think that's the coldest um, coldest day I've ever been outside. And the coldest day I've had to, like, do a paintball game. Yeah. Like, it was literally zero, and I think the high was, like, eight. I'll tell you what, that stupid green green hair kept my head warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and special thanks to the guy who shot the camera guy. Yeah. Who shot you? If he's watching, I'm sure he'll take credit. Was it Tony? It was no. probably Tony. Uh, whoever shot him always takes credit on our Facebook Live. Yeah, I was about to say it was on last week's Facebook <laughs> yeah. Live. We'll have to look at last week's Facebook Live. See, that's live. just it. Like, you're always live when I'm at work. Yeah. Where are you at? Where are you? Who shot the cameraman, <laughs> a.k.a. Target? <laughs> Why he wasn't actually a Target. He had I know, right? Vest on. Right. Yeah. There's actually a video floating around of him getting shot, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, there is. It's on video. But anyway, um, I think that pretty much concludes it then, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Right, I mean, cool. like I said, Prometheus. I want to go over, but I can't. We can't. All right, so we got a ticket to give away and a T-shirt. So um, you have your comments up. I don't. Uh, why don't you scroll through there and pick a lucky winner? Oh, if you're not biased. I'm very biased. Just don't pick anybody on your team. How about that? Uh, I, I don't give them awards <laughs> at games or anything. Like nobody gets awards at games that I I command because I refuse to give any of them. You like that teacher that won't give an A? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like Rusty, plus. Rusty got the uh, the zombie award. Oh yeah, he was I gave the it to only him. one there. I gave it to yeah. him too. Um, no, he did good. He dressed up, man. Yeah, no, yeah, he was that, was, that was like that was really the best zombie costume I've seen. I think that was awesome. I mean, if people knew the level of detail that he put into it, as far as like actually the patches being right mm-hmm. and it actually being the Rogue Patriots uniform with the blood stains and everything, it was yeah, no, he, he really it did. was very well done. Yeah, I mean, he met our dress code minus the tears and blood stains and mud. Yeah, but it was awesome. I was like, that was really cool. All right, um, I'll tell you what, Kyle Stretch Washington. Kyle right. Stretch Washington reached out to me about some stuff, and I think this guy's got some potential. Let me see this guy. What's this guy look like? Let's see. Kyle. I don't know. It won't let me open uh, it. It won't let you open it. And his picture's really but hard. But he's to watching. Use so, and it says Washington. I mean, and I mean, you can't go wrong with the guy who goes by AK Stretch. I know, right? So, so Kyle Stretch Washington. You got a ticket. You got a, a ticket t-shirt. and a T-shirt. So we will uh, message you about that. Yeah. Yeah. All about Reggie. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We'll, ch- we'll check in with you guys another time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all uh, actually Friday at uh, 7 is, or 6 as well. Are oh, you going sure. around again? Yeah, we're going Friday at 6. Cool. Yeah. You, you want to discuss the topic real quick? Oh, know. yeah, and Friday we're going over masks. Um, recommendations for masks. So V Force Grills. We're going with um, all everything from B. Everything we're going from beginner. EVS. <laughs> everything from beginner mask to advanced mask. So um, we'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next. Uh, well, this Friday.